Please welcome Julia McCarthy. Good evening. What an unbelievable honor it is to be here with all of you tonight to celebrate Mr. Remet's historic winning of the 1913 U.S. Open. I must, of course, extend a very special welcome to Mr. Palmer. I feel I've gotten to know you in part from those delicious half and halves of yours <laughs> that I'm pretty sure we all gulped down on the 19th hole. And to Mr. Lerner, Mr. Frost, Mr. Jacobson, and Mr. Paxton, a very warm and admittedly a semi-starstruck welcome to you all as well. Now when it comes to the game of golf, I recognize that I have a little different background from most of my peers here tonight. I did not grow up with an instinctual love or gravitation towards the game. I never went to any summer camps or clinics to improve my own play. And all of my years of employment at a golf course were not spent at a private course or a country club, but instead at Worcester's own Green Hill Municipal Golf Course. I did not come to love golf so naturally. I first came to golf in order to help out my family. You see, I come from a rather large family. I have five brothers and five sisters. Yep. <laughs> So, as you can imagine, money was rather tight growing up. By the time I was 13, my family's money problems had turned rather severe. By, by this time, we had lost our house to foreclosure, and as a result, spent several months homeless, hopping from hotel to hotel. Also by this time, my father had left us failing to provide any means of support in doing so. Every single day was a struggle. But luckily for me, Green Hill had just received a unique grant from the city, funding that would allow them to take inner city kids such as myself and train them to become caddies. Now here I was, an inner city girl nonetheless, and a pretty scrawny one at that, that knew absolutely nothing about golf. But nonetheless, my younger brother Joseph and I were both accepted into this unique caddy program, which was run by Green Hill's own Matthew Moisson. <laughs> Little by little, Mr. Moisson taught me everything that I needed to know in order to make it as a successful summer caddy. And he soon became as close a father figure to me as anyone. He always made sure that me and my brother had enough food throughout the day, never making us pay. He always made sure that, that we felt safe, that we felt wanted, and most importantly, that we felt valued. I spent practically every day at the golf course, from sun up till sun down, and at the end of each day, me and my brother would both proudly hand over whatever tips we had made to my mom to pay for small things like groceries or gas for the week. After that summer, I worked for two more years as a caddy, and a year after that as a caddy master. Now, while caddying had always made me a decent amount of money, Money was not the thing that kept me coming back year after year. Every time that I was on that golf course, I felt at peace. I felt reassured because in every single golfer that I came across, in every single pro shop worker, every single cart master, I had found a renewed faith in manners, a renewed faith in people. Lacking a strong male figure in my life, I never had the best impression of what a gentleman should be. But on the golf course, I found all of these things. 
Before I had even gone out on the course for a round, I thought that I might be looked down upon because I was a girl. But every single golfer that I had come across treated me with the respect that my father's departure had led me believe that I was not worthy of. From the genuine smiles, the constant thank yous, and the friendly joking back and forth from hole to hole, I found true gentlemen once again. Golf renewed my faith in class. It made me believe that the smooth, courteous gentlemen like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin existed again. After my first year of caddying was through, Mr. Moisson even persuaded me to start playing golf myself. I played on the girls' varsity team all four years of high school, and I grew, loved, I grew to love playing the game as well because I had found a true home on the golf course and I just couldn't stay away. When I came into my senior year of high school, I had never even heard of the Francis We Met Fund. Mr. Moisson was the one to encourage me to apply and to once again take a chance. It is because of people like Mr. Moisson that I grew into maturity with a sense of manners, respect, and dignity. Golf is more than just a game, as I'm sure you all know. It is a way of life. Being on that golf course just reminds me of the type of people that I want to be around my entire life. I mean, I can bet you that at this moment right now, my mother has only about half of her attention on me and the other half dedicated to scoping the room for potential son-in-law candidates. <laughs> and mom, you can scope. <laughs> <laughs> For the past two years, I have had the privilege of being a Francis We Met Scholar, an honor which I continue to hold with much pride and gratitude. When I applied for this scholarship two years ago, I had a certain perception of what the scholarship could provide for me, maybe some help with those expensive college books, or it could be something that I could brag about to my golf-obsessed brothers. But the We Met Fund has never ceased to amaze me or my mother with the financial relief that they've been able to provide me. Without them, I would not be at a college so reputable and prestigious as the College of the Holy Cross. <laughs> I would not have a future ripe with so many possibilities and opportunity. And not to mention, I wouldn't get to meet so many famous people. <laughs> it was such a pleasure to meet Mr. Connolly this evening, a fellow crusader. I'm a theater English double major at Holy Cross, and because of Mark Frost's so very generous, endowed scholarship through the We Met Fund, specifically for performing arts students like myself, I will travel to London in just a week for a month-long theater course. So to Mr. Frost, I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> this is news to him, apparently. <laughs> um, this past summer, I was even able to give back to the We Met Fund in a small way by fundraising and playing in the golf marathon along with my three brothers and my Uncle John. But it's just amazing to me how many possibilities have opened up since I've become a WeMet scholar. Golf has never given up on me. It has never let me down, and neither has the WeMet Fund. Being a caddy allowed me in part to take care of my family, but I never imagined that golf, in return, would take care of me. So once again, thank you, We Met Fund. Scholars, supporters, donators, for everything that you do, for caring for me, for protecting me and so many others, for teaching me to be welcoming and friendly, for taking a chance on me like Francis took on little Eddie Lowry, and most importantly, thank you for welcoming me into this very special family that I will always remain a part of.
Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your evening. All I can say is, thank God Bubba Watson wasn't here. <laughs> I can't stop the tears. Um, <laughs> Julia, that was just so special and, and just incredible. And you, you, to, you, have to, you should be very, very proud, as should your mother and your, your whole family. You did a fabulous job. Thank you. Thank you. And this special award goes to Julia. It says, the Francis We Met Scholarship Fund is proud to present this plaque to Julia McCarthy for serving as a student speaker at the We Met Centennial Gala, May 15, 2013. Thank you so much for what you did. Thank you. Julia, that was incredible. Congratulations.